Hello, welcome to another episode of Machine Learning Made Simple. Today we'll be going over TSNE, a topic I'm particularly excited about just because of I have a bit of a history with this topic. When I first came across it, I wasn't really sure of why it was useful and when exactly I would use it. Um, just because the idea seemed a little convoluted to me. But as I read more into how exactly it's used, I was pretty blown away by both you know the ingenuity of how they implemented it and how you could how you could use it to augment your machine learning tasks so a quick quick overview of the topic the tsne stands for t distributed stochastic neighbor embedding now that might sound very complicated but uh, it, and to a certain degree it is something that you should be you know it isn't the most obvious but what I found the most important in this about the algorithm is the stochastic number embedding part and we'll go over what this means exactly. It is a unsupervised nonlinear technique which you use primarily for exploring data uh, your data, how basically your data uh, look what your data looks like in high dimensions and actually visualizing. So building off the earlier point, what it does is it, helps you see how your data clusters in higher dimensions. Uh, it will take a high dimensional input like uh, data with 80 features and it can return a data point with two features. And if you have a data set with 80 features of like 100 points with um, 80 features and you would like to see, okay, what do these features, how do these data points actually look, what do these data points look like to my neural network? You can use TSNE to kind of see okay this is kind of what your data is clustering like it does have its limitations though which is why it's important to know learn about the alternative algorithms some of which I'll mention here and to learn more about them just uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel as I keep uploading videos on these topics TSNE is very useful in classification and segment uh, segmentation so when I was working in my ICICA bank internship we actually used TSNE to great effect because we were trying to uh, segment our uh, possible customers based on customer journey, and we wanted to see, okay, can this what uh, you know, can I convert this customer based on how they're behaving on certain on certain platforms? And we used TSNE to be able to identify which customers were most likely to be converted, which customers were least. How could we identify churn, etc. Uh, this video in, uh, in particular will not go with the mathematics behind TSNE. It will give you a very, it will give you the idea of how the algorithm works. If you would like to know about the math, be sure to uh, leave a comment down below or use any of my links, my Twitter, Instagram or LinkedIn. I prefer Instagram just because uh, it has the replying feature which makes conversation much easier. But any of the social media links are fine with me. So feel free to use any of them to if you're interested in learning about the math and obviously subscribe to my channel so that when you do when I do upload the video on the math behind it you can be informed so it is suited to nonlinear data with high dimensions going back to my ICICI bank example uh, in that inter uh, for that data set we were using I don't I don't remember the exact details but about 150 or to 200 different features to classify a, a possible customer and uh, a lot of these features are related to each other because they are to, they, they are to they deal with how the customer interacts with the data set and how what their customer journey on an ICICI bank platform looks like in that case uh, you know the data is non-linear which means the features don't have linear relationships with each other and it's obviously high dimensional because 150 plus dimensions and TSNE helps you visualize that in two dimensions which is kind of absurd when you say it out loud and uh, so as I've stated already so what it is is it will take a high dimensional object and it will give you a two or three dimensional point in return and uh, it, it can technically give you as many dimensions as you want I could take a 20 dimensional object and turn it into 10 dimensions Typically you don't do that because you use TSNE to visualize thing, your data and when you visualize, you we humans cannot understand 10 dimensional graphs. 
so which is why we have which is why we tend to stick to two or three dimensions but uh, just know that you can technically model uh, as many dimensions as you want and what it, uh, the uniqueness of this is that uh, similar points similar points will have um, you know similar points will be close together and um, so so similar high dimensional points will be close together in the lower dimensional data and points that are not similar in the high dimensions will also not be close sim close together in the lower dimensions but uh, this is kind of probabilistic so d there might be a uh, slight deviations which is why you know tsne cannot be used for clustering per se because it will it will it will only it will miss out certain things and again it's a probabilistic algorithm remember it's a stochastic algorithm so it doesn't always follow the same steps uh, it is it has actually been used for visualization for in a lot of very cool areas such as genomics computer security nlp etc etc i was actually about to use it in um, one of my possible internships was in cancer research and i was looking into dsne being used there now um, you know as mentioned the once i started reading about the uses of dsne and how people were using it i was actually pretty blown away by how useful this could be so if you're interested i would recommend googling up dsne in whatever field you're interested in and you might be able to learn a lot there and share that in the comments below because reading comments from my subscribers actually helps me learn more about things as well so it's a two-way street here So how does the algorithm work? So we have two steps to the DSNE algorithm. First, uh, we will what we will do is we will try to construct a probability distribution. That distribution takes in two inputs, which is basically uh, to, uh, a pair of two points in your high dimensional data set. So we might take two different customers from my ICICI bank data set. And the pro it will it will return a probability. Now what we will try to do is when we have two points that are very similar they will get a high probability and when we have two points that are not similar we will get a low probability and uh, then once we have this uh, tsne uh, probability distribution created we try to re reverse engineer a this uh, we try to reverse engineer points but in lower dimensions instead so we take uh, a similar probability distribution and then we try to see like okay uh, if we had to how do we get if our pop probability is 0.5 how do we get 0.5 given two uh, two inputs in lower dimension so instead of two bank uh, you know bank customer dimension objects which have 150 dimensions we'll we'll just get two we'll just try to find two arbitrary points with two dimensions that will match the probability distributions and we try to minimize the KL um, divergence, the callback libeler divergence between these two probability distributions. Now, if you want to know what the KL divergence is, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'll be sure, I'll look in, I'll definitely create a video about it. It's a very cool topic and definitely something that uh, I, I plan to get into. If you're very, very passionate about it, you know, be sure to scream that out in the comments below so that I can know about your burning curiosity and desire to know about KL divergence and I can work on it quicker. Now the original algorithm used Euclidean distance uh, as the basis of its similarity you know uh, when we're constructing this probability distribution but you might uh, you know depending on your kind of uh, task you might want to change that to something more suitable. For example NLP uh, uses cosine similarity for a lot of um, you know computing similarity between two blocks of text and in that case we might not you know we might substitute that as our similarity metric for our TSNE algorithm to know more about uh, cosine similarity and how cool it is and how it works be sure to click one of the video cards that show up above somewhere here and you'll be able to learn about it uh, I, I made a video on it a while back it was one of my first machine learning made simple videos actually it did pretty well, so I'm sure you'll be able to take away quite a bit from it. And you know, let me know how you like that video in the comments. And if you found what you know about cosine similarity and other similarity metrics that you could use. 
So here's an example of the DSNE dataset, and this was actually the classic example they gave with it, which is the digits dataset. So here, uh, the digits dataset, if you don't know, is essentially a dataset that has 784 features, and it tries to classify what digit you've written. So if you know like OCR, optical character recognition, etc., you might you might write a digit using one of the pens or you might like sketch out a number so using so for that they created a machine learning algorithm that can take that uh, drawing and split it into 784 different features and then they used a convolutional neural network to identify what digit we were dealing with and what they were able to show with TSNE is that uh, look, we can actually see uh, what digits are similar and different to each other. Not to a large degree. Again, uh, we'll, this is a point I'll get to later. But we can, for example, start to see that the orange and uh, this color right here, which is 5 and which is the orange. Seems like 8. 5 and 8, there are some points that are oh almost similar to each other. Or green 1 and or 8 orange have also some points that are pretty close, re relatively close to each other. And we see that uh, 0 and 6 are by themselves, which, you know, might give you, which you can use to derive a lot of insight. So be sure to check out TSNE. There's lots of examples of, you know, TSNE graphs being used in lots of uh, classification tasks. So now you might be wondering why, why we even need TSNE in the first place when it just seems like the same thing that PCA does. Uh, but uh, so what we mentioned earlier, TSNE is very, very good with non-linear relationships. And PC PCA cannot do that. Again, principal component analysis was invented in around the 1930s. So at that time, data was much simpler. Uh, tracking was much simpler. Computation was you know, much, much, much uh, more limited than it is today. So you couldn't exactly do these very fancy things. And it was a linear technique created for its times. Similarly, uh, TSNE does not preserve global relationships, so you cannot, uh, like you know, PCA will try to preserve the entirety of the structure of the algorithm. So, as we mentioned earlier, um, TSNE will try to get make sure that close point, uh, you know, similar points are very close to each other, and if a point is not similar to another point, it's further away. But you know you can't use that as a you cannot use that to so for example you cannot take a random blue point and you cannot say that it's this far away from a purple point so it's this you know th there is that much of a difference between them you cannot do that with TSNE because uh, it doesn't pre preserve the global relationships what it does do is it preserves local relationships so if two points are close to each other you have a very good idea that they belong they're similar to each other no. this is a more co comprehensive uh, table containing the differences between them I, I found this online I thought it was really useful so I just thought uh, I'd share it with you guys so obviously it mentions that it's linear PCA is linear TSNE is not uh, PCA tries to preserve uh, TSNE does not so when it comes to nonlinear data PCA doesn't work as well it has errors which is one of the motivations behind TSNE you know obviously there's some differences in implementation uh, perplex perplexity is an interesting idea actually I will be making a video on it soon so be sure to uh, subscribe for that uh, it's a very very cool concept I think it's the next video I'll make is probably going to be perplexity unless you guys let me uh, unless you guys scream and shout and tell me what topic you want before that and TSNE is very good with outliers. It is non deterministic or randomized. So, different, if, if I take the same data set and I run the TSNE different times, I'll actually get different looking graphs. And that's one of the interesting things about it. And that's why I said it's not strictly very good for clustering because you know you don't want different looking clusters every time you use it. But it does do its basic f function very, very well. I know there's some technical details, but the differences between them. I'll let you read this more. And if you want to me to elaborate on any points, just be sure to let me know. So, uh, I think I'm going to end this video here, and I just wanted to talk about 
would I like some points you can note. So TSNE is to be used strictly for exploring your data. Again, I've been mentioning this throughout, I will mention it now. Don't use it for clustering, you're just wasting computation. And you might actually end up uh, analyzing it wrong. It is not deterministic and will only preserve local structure, so large scale, very big uh, data clustering, not very useful there. Uh, another thing I found very interesting with DSNE is that you can actually take this uh, data set and you can try to, um, you know, you can try to, uh, you can map that into two, three dimensions and then you can use these additional data points as input for more machine learning models. I tried doing that, it worked out very well for me. Uh, in that case, however, uh, the computation was too much. ICICI Bank could really do this large scale because remember, they operate on the ICICI Bank is a global, national, international, multinational bank, so they have a lot more, their data set is huge, so they cannot reliably, you know, do a lot of these processes. But if you are dealing with something manageable, this might be an interesting way to use it, where you use TSNE to create uh, more input that you can use. And there are other alternatives such as UMAP and I'll be, I'm actually reading about UMAP because I've heard two or three different contradictory things about it. So I'm going to be reading about, about it and you guys will be updated on it very soon. So be very, very hyped for that. And as mentioned at the start of the video, the more you learn, the more we're able to, uh, you know, the more options you'll have in your tooth belt to use in your uh, algorithms and machine learning and data analysis tasks. So be sure to, you know, if you do have any experience with UMAP or any other alternatives to TSNE or any other algorithms that are similar to this, be sure to let me know. Uh, again, as mentioned, one of the benefits of content creation is that I can learn from you guys as well. Like recently on my video about Simplair, I was able to learn that uh, it doesn't do very well when your data sets are not very well balanced. And that was not a uh, learning I knew from just reading the paper. This was something that somebody who works in uh, research actually told me that when they tried to practically implement Simpler, they had this issue. So similarly, you know, I'm always looking forward to learning more from you guys. So if you have any uh, experience with this or alternatives, let me know. And if you found this video useful, be sure to leave a like and uh, like. It really helps out the video for the YouTube algorithm you know it helps my channel grow and it helps tremendously the uh, videos have been doing very well recently so I really do appreciate all the support you guys are showing be sure to keep smashing that like button to promote the growth and here's all my links to social media they will be in the description below in case you want to discuss this video any other thing else or you would or you've come across my private tutoring content etc and you'd like to learn more about either uh, becoming better at theoretical computer science mathematics machine learning AI or uh, you know just interview preparation be sure to let me know in the, and you can use my comment uh, links to reach out to me you know uh, last but not least to support my YouTube channel if you're in America be sure to use my free uh, Robin Hood referral link. We both get a free stock there, so not using it is really losing out on money. There's no risk to you, and you're guaranteed a free stock. So I don't really see why you won't use it. Uh, but that's about it. Have a good one. Be sure to leave any feedback you have.